Welcome to our broadcast. Woo, how's this trailer? This bugger, he carry plenty load. I went, I went Boston Lee Spring, so I had to go make new one. Today, we're going to weld them up because I need this trailer for carry. You know, friends, we're the carriers as well, you know? We house him and we carry him and he go with us and we go with him and wherever we go, we transport his glory. And you know, friends, he's coming forth to you and I, the many-membered body of Christ, because that's who we are and that's what we do. We got a word to deliver. Stay tuned with him and me. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our broadcast. As you can see, we was kind of cruising around the farm. And you know, oh yeah, it's sucking windy. So we had to make wind break. And as you can see around the farm, we get wind break all over the place. You know, the wind break is necessary because these plants no can handle too much stress here. Wind stress, uh, you, you know, uh, wind, rain, like that. No can handle so much. So we gotta give some form of protection. And that's what the wind break for. You know, friends, God, he put people inside our life to actually become that for us. Because, you know, we want many membered body of Christ and we move together in unison. And every part gotta play his part. You know, this thing about faith, you know, faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders receive the good report. You know, you know that, that scripture right there? Well, faith, number one, is substance. And God has given every man a measure of faith. And, you know, for those of you that is struggling in your faith, you know, because get this, this brother who had one boy who was, uh, he, was, he was possessed, yeah? And the spirit would torment his boy so much that the father came, brought his boy to the disciples and said to them, the, the disciples of Jesus, and said, Hey, you my boy. And they couldn't do it. So the father went bring the boy to Jesus and said, Jesus, I brought my boy to your disciples. And uh, they couldn't cast out this tormenting spirit because my boy, he kind of, he get nuts. He throw himself inside of the water. He throw himself in a fire. Nobody can help him, Lord, but I know you can. And, and Jesus says, uh, if you only can believe, all things possible. You think I can do this, son? You believe I can do this, son? And the man's response to the Lord was, Lord, I believe, but help thou man believe. You, you see how this man had a measure of faith, but he also had ukapaila doubts inside him. But see, he had faith that Christ could do it. You see, friends, those of us that have a measure of faith that has been walking with the Lord and we've been exercising that spirit muscle, we kind of morph out, you know, because you begin like on small seed, but you got to morph out to become a mature tree where other animals can come lodge himself under. That's how the scripture uses the topic on faith. So if you're a morphed out tree, in this case, I'm referring to me. If you know what not faith, Come house yourself under my faith over a living word. Because you know why? We're in his mouth. We eat his word and we cannot help but just ooze his word out into the earth. Because, friends, that's what we are. We eat the jaws of life. I, I got to share with you on this one uh, dream the Lord will take me into. And, he, you know, you get the kind of dream that is pizza kind of dream. You know, when you overeat like that and you go try to crash. Like, you get all kind stuff come in coming yeah but then get the kind that is god kind you got to be able to discern the kind that is from god and the kind that is from eating too much spicy food perhaps this dream friends i saw my boy my boy when get into a car wreck and in this dream i saw that the first responders came and they had the jaws of life you know the one they use for for cut the car up so that you can extract the person who stays stuck pinned in the car and in this case I saw my boy, he was pinned in a car and they went go use the jaws of life. And they went cut this car apart and they was taking him out in pieces. You know, he wasn't one whole person. He was all body parts all over the place, but they did extract him with the jaws of life. And then the next scene, the scene when she fam, I'm now in a hospital and I'm walking to the gurney and I'm looking and get all his body parts all in order on top of the table. And upon closer observation, I realized that he know was dead. I actually went look and I saw like had the main veins connecting all of the different body parts laid out like one puzzle. 
on the gurney and I realized, hey, he's not dead. Look, I, I could actually see the blood flowing through the main veins to all the body parts. When I came out of that dream, immediately I already knew what the interpretation was. You see, friends, the jaws of life in the dream represents us and the word being in our mouth. We're the jaws of life that is extracting suns from uh, uh, things that they have gotten themselves into that would mess up their life. You know, like I, I've been saying for some time now, we're like damaged goods. The sons of God have been separated from their God. They're in a car wreck called life. You know, the enemy has infiltrated somehow and has gotten into all our lives and just, I mean, the bugger just didn't have one heyday with us and we're left as a byproduct, all jam up like that. But you see, we who eat the word of God becomes that jaws of life because when we're consumers of that word, we speak life. And in essence, we're saving sons and we're pulling them out from Satan's grips. See, that's who we are in him. When we're the consumers of the word and we become that living word. You see, this is the word made flesh. And as we're coming into this season of our lives of maturity, friends, because I know we're all on different planes of maturity. The point being is that I don't care how hard things get. I don't care what challenges you're facing in life. You got to keep pressing into him. You got to go higher into him and you got to go deeper into him. That's what we do, you know. And as we're moving like that, you're going to find that God always comes forth. He always comes through, but he's going to put a demand on your faith. You see, because you got to appropriate God's provision. He already got a victory for us. Our job is to appropriate, lay hold of that victory and live in his victory in spite of what we're having to traverse through. You know, so, so we're talking about windbreak, yeah? See, these are folk that people, that God put into our life for help us have that time to be able to mature. We kind of like house ourselves. We shelter down and we... Uh, have time to incubate and take another step in another season of maturity until we become full-blown and others can come and lodge themselves in our faith so that they can morph out in God. See, that's the beauty of this. And a good spiritual father will be able to see that in a son in his maturing process. And he'll know how to house and when to uh, calculate the neglect to promote growth. You see, you see, when we become shelters and we protect, sometimes can get lazy. Yeah? The one who's under that protection can get lazy, expect everything to be done and everything will be cool, daddy. And, and the wind break himself or daddy, in this case, can take all the blows for him. No, 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 no. See, come on point in time where it's time that that which covers got to pull back a little bit and, and just let these plants, or in this case, a sun, experience all the elements all around it because he got to learn for exercise his own muscle you see if we shelter all the time then we can uh, actually uh do harm by stifling the growth and now you get on bonsai plant baka should be fully mature but he look mature but stunted in his growth and guess who's responsible those of us that are that covering you see, friends, the beauty of being able to see God in everything that we're doing and in everything we find ourselves in, dilemmas and all, you see. In the dilemma, see, this is where you learn how to move your spirit muscles. And you know us, in the fallen nature, because we're, we're coming out from or we're out from, but we get the memory of how we used to function in the old nature, we always seem to revert back in taking care of any kind of business especially on the spirit plane, but we try to deal with things of the spirit on a natural plane. And, and it doesn't work that way, friends. You see, we're talking about two different worlds. Until both worlds uh, gel and become one in spirit and in truth and is seen through God's eye, then now heaven has descended into earth on every plane. And that's the thing. The glory of God has to fill the earth because he prophesied that he would pull out a stone, cut out of the mountain without hands, that would be utilized and cast at the statue that has been infiltrated over the ages, satanically speaking, that God would use an uncut stone that man has not touched, but God himself. You see, talk about get a piece of a rock. See, hit a rock. And that's the thing about that. Satan has counterfeited, counterfeited the rock. Now we're still smoking a rock and we're getting all nuts because of that rock. I was talking about that drug stuff that is just infiltrating this land. Some of you stay stuck on that, but I promise you, 
If you beat, you let your heart beat after him, your freedom really is available in the now. See, your job is to press into him and you watch what happens. Things will begin to just fall off of you. You don't have to remain stuck. I mean, you families that have to watch your family member stay stuck like that. It is frustrating, I know that. And so at the same time, because all of the memories how things was before they got stuck, still haunts us right there. And we like see that which was before they got stuck, come back again. But see, God like they come even further in that. Even the, the memories before that, there's more in God to be had to those who wants to have him. See, and when you have him, he'll come forth through you. You see, and all of these things, the change that's on you, it's going to come off because he, he made provision, friends. God made a provision in Christ Jesus. See, for this purpose, the stock purpose, was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Any hang up that you may have, any old nature habit that you may have that, that somehow becomes that back door for Satan to come through and come right up into your spirit and anchor you down into the pits of hell while you're living on earth, that's the reason why Christ came forth for, to, to destroy the works of the devil so that you can be free. Because friends, you have the right to be free. We don't have to remain stuck. So the beauty of watching God move through channels as a spiritual father, see, see, I, I'm being able to, I'm watching these things develop out of myself. Then I'm watching how, you know, all the turmoil in life that happens, I can see that in my weakness, this is where he's made strong. You see, because if we think we're going to handle things in the natural, in this world of spirit, then we're actually going to exhaust ourselves. We're going to get tired. We're going to get frustrated. See, because you cannot begin something that is of spirit in the flesh. We appropriate by faith and we move with him in every realm. And, and that's, what, that's how he comes forth through us and out from us. His glory fills the earth. So wherever you go, friends, you're the glory of God that's moving in the earth. See, you're the one that is filling the earth with His glory. Stone cut out of the mountain without hands that is used to, to appropriate God, cast us, or we throw ourselves before the throne. And in essence, by doing so, every satanic thing has to come down because we're at His mercy. He's coming forth through us and we're thrown into any given situation and His glory fills every situation. And now, friends, He takes over completely and totally. You see, we don't need to remain stuck. We are the vehicles that the Word of God comes forth through. We are the jaws of life that frees sons and that connecting vein, main vein that goes through is the blood of Jesus Christ that supplies and brings life to every single part because no more plenty bodies. Only get one body of Christ and he the head of this body. So he the one coordinates all the functions. So it may look like that we still all divided. But you see, the way you and I move with him in one is kind of pretty simple. Is that true sons of God are those that are doing the will of the Father. You see, that's how we know who my brother, who my father, who my sister, who my mother. It's those that's doing, doing friends the will of the Father. So when we are doing Him and He's doing us, then He's coming forth through us. And He's going to throw us in dilemmas because, you see, for us, if we see Him as one dilemma, instead of coming with the combination to, to see that, oh, that's a locked situation, but yet the kingdom of God needs access because it's been usurped. The Kepolo and change the lock, think He's getting away with it. He's squatting upon the inheritance that belongs to sons. See, when you see Him like that, then you can go any place that the Lord, the Spirit of God directs you to. And you are that combination to that lock situation. And when the Lord in you moves into those areas and you begin to unlock the chains, the doors blow open and the Spirit of the Lord flows right into that lock situation and all that darkness in there gets exposed. And the beauty of this is that there are sons and daughters of the kingdom of God that is locked down in a Babylonish system. They're good people, but they're in lockdown and they don't even know they stay in lockdown. See, so when God orders something, friends, I want you to know something. You're the vehicle. You're the one that's carrying. You're the one 
that he overloads so that you can take that load and deliver the goods. You see, you see how that works? That's why I had to show you the footage of getting inside a truck first thing in the morning. And, you know, we go off to work. We got to carry load. We got to push this. We got to pull that. We got to transport goods from here to there. See, in the natural, the picture is already laid out. Our God will give us all the footage necessary in life. He draw picture for us because he know me. This kind of go here. I learned by draw picture. And when once I see a picture that is painted in life, I can see him in as the master painter. And when you can see that he the one that's doing all the painting, see, see, we sons know as a matter of fact that our God orders our footsteps. But why, 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 how do we know that? Well, the footsteps of a righteous man is ordered of the Lord. You see, so if he's ordering our footsteps on a daily basis then you got to see him through any given, even the stuff that no feel good, friends. Even the challenges that seems to uh, come your way to kind of want to take you down. You got to trust that God get people in the balance that's going to hold your atmosphere while you're being processed. I mean, it's, it's like Jesus saying to Peter, Peter, Satan has desired to see you as wheat, but I have prayed the Father that your faith no fail. And when you are converted, become strength to your fellow brethren. You see how that works right there? The impartation that Peter needed, he saw Christ as the demonstration, not just the demonstration, he was God in human drag is what he was. And Peter saw this, he saw the signs, wonders and miracles that followed Christ. See, you and I don't have to produce the miracle. We are a miracle that's happening. And signs and wonders follow us as we follow his lead. You see how, how that thing work? See, so when Christ said to Peter, Peter, Satan has desired to see if you as wheat. That story, friends, has not changed. I'm singing the same song to you. Satan has desired you to sift you as wheat. But I'm praying to the Father that your faith no fail. You, you, know, you know, when I'm saying that I'm praying that your faith no fail, it's because the living word that flows out from and into your spirit is all that is necessary and needed. It's the cross, friends. It's our appropriation of what Christ already did and finished. When he said, it's finished, he said what he meant. He meant what he said. Our job is to lay hold by faith what he said. And the enemy will battle that word. It ain't finished. God needs your help. Work for it. Exercise. And a one. And a two. You know, you make you do all the exercise. Calisthenics, spiritually speaking. Friends, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is appropriate by faith and you move with him. And as you're moving with him, friends, you, you, you're you going to realize something. The windbreak that you see all about me, you'll become a windbreak in the kingdom of God. And also, he may send you into some storms to, to, to grab them by the tail, whirlwinds and yank them and anchor that bugger. Or he may cause you to walk into calm situations to throw everything into the wind. Because, you know, the God I serve, he's the God of the wind. The rain, the fire, earth, wind, and fire, and everything else. He's the God that created them all. So if I know who the creator of all these things is, then I'm going to see him in everything, friends. And as we move, we can move with the Prince of Peace. This world, no more peace. This world, trying to look for peace, trying to buy peace, trying to do whatever is necessary to, to get peace. They're not going to find them until they truly find the Prince of Peace. And if you can cut through the chase and know who your God is, you see, then you don't have to be weak-wristed about nothing. That doesn't mean you're not going to have challenges where you're going to like give up. Because even the great men of God, God in, in the scriptures, they faced a whole lot of challenges. I mean, I remember Elijah. Elijah had one showdown with all the prophets of Baal. You build your altar, I build mine. No put fire. The God that answered by fire, let him be God. And you know, when he faced that challenge and he actually, the challenge between him and the false prophets of Baal, it was because God's people was stuck between two opinions. So the man of God had to come and he looked at his people while he was having the challenge with the, the wannabe prophets. He says, my people, how long hold you between two opinions? If God be God, go serve him. If the Kepolo, go serve him all the way. And then the challenge went down and God himself answered by fire. And that was the evidence to the masses. We're talking about Elijah's people. That was the illustration that they needed to see on the challenge because they were torn between two lovers, feeling like a fool. I'm pretty sure about that. 
But when they figure him out that God is large and in charge, and they saw him demonstrate himself by answering by fire, when the man of God went and he gave them the orders, he says, wipe out all our false prophets because they're useless. See, after that great challenge, the man of God moved on. But you see, as he was moving on from a great, out from the season of a great victory, he got threatened by, a, by that Wahine, what her name, Jezebel. Jezebel came because her husband, Ahab, came and says, hey, you know that guy, Elijah, he will kill all our prophets. He will make us all shame. And when a wife, Jezebel, the queen, heard, she says, man of God, by this time tomorrow, you're a dead man. So I saw what you did with my prophets. I'm going to kill you this time tomorrow. The man of God, in his openness, Satan channeled through that one voice. Remember, we are the jaws of life. Wow, that was on jaws of death right there. And in his openness to hear what she had to say and took it to heart, Satan just went flood right into his, because of his openness. And that man of God, belly ache to God and he says, Lord, kill me. I don't like to live anymore. This is too big for me. One woman, friends, one channel that was open to Satan, Satan flooded through. And in the man of God's openness to Jezebel's threats, Satan will flood him, and even he himself will get weak need. That's one good example of you and I. You see, we're forever having uh, contacts with channels in life. Cannot help. We all, we all work. We all, you know, doing things in life. And what we don't realize is that if we're not connecting to God first and foremost, and we're not using him as the filtration system before we connect with each other, what happens is that spiritually speaking, you build the bridge and whatever's on them is going to traffic your way. Have you ever been driving around or just kind of walking around and all of a sudden your thoughts get flooded with stuff that you never even think about thinking and you wonder, wow, where all of this came from? You see, friends, that's transference. And when you're open to transference, I want you to know something. As a son of God, no go to condemnation. But may you have a conviction and may you learn how to exercise your muscle to know that is that all of that kind of thoughts that's coming in is nothing but transference. It's not your thoughts. It's been thrown upon you. So you need to just disregard it and say, forget that. That's not my thoughts. Return to sender because I'm not going to let it infiltrate my life. You see what I mean? The way we conduct life in this kingdom has to be in spirit and in truth. See, he's truth himself way truth and life anything lesser than that is but a death sentence it's suicide to leave him and that's why when we enter in we depart not from his presence we stay with him we stand at full attention and we pay attention friends see that's the problem we get short attention spans because other neon lights in life attracts us and once we tune out from him and we tune into whatever is all about us now we're in trouble. This is where transference comes. This is where we get weak in our walk with God because it's like Jezebel taunting the man of God, saying to him, oh, you won on victory yesterday, eh? today is my day. I'm taking you down, see? And you take that to heart and you begin to live, live defeated lives. Friends, it's, it's enough, enough defeat in our life. Don't you think? Aren't you sick about going up and down, up and down in your walk with God or, or feeling like you've plateaued in Him? In God's kingdom, there is no plateau. You see, we just go higher and we go deeper in Him. You and I have been given and allotted a space and time to live. You and I can choose how we want to live that life and for whom we want to live the life. I choose Him. I hope you, friends, choose Him too. Nobody's depriving you of your life here on this earth. See? But see, you running your kingdom on your terms means you're stuck under satanic influence. And really, you're not running what you think you're running and in large and in charge of. You're under satanic influence and you're actually being pimped out. You, you actually, Satan is pimping you out and you don't even know it. He's going to exhaust you, get everything he can get out of you, deplete you, leave you flat tire. And at the end of life, or what you think is, you know, things has wrapped up and you already went hit the wave, you can catch the wave and other wave has crashed. And you're going to start feeling, ah, no more nothing else to live for. Friends, 
that's an illusion and it's a lie. And if you eat a lie and you begin to, you're going to begin to speak the lie. You're going to speak death. You're not going to be the jaws of life. You're going to be the jaws of death. It's time we change already. It's time we flip over and let the Lord be large and in charge, friends. You and I are the jaws of life that free sons out of whatever wreck situation they're in. We extract them out from. God uses us to extract out sons from whatever dilemma they're in. And the, and the line of life that comes forth true that I saw in that dream had to do with his blood life going through every single part. Bagaluk did. Trust you me, it ain't dead because he promised he would raise up an army in this time and he's already doing it through you and me. Friends, it's been a pleasure coming on the airwaves to you, with you. Till the next time, may the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, and you'll be blessed now. Aloha. Ahui ho. Emalama ponno. All right. <laughs> No! Oh.